Hi, everybody. Welcome to the podcast, Follow Your Passion. I'm Erwin Wils. I'm your host and I'm a mindset coach and business uh, strategist and founder of Millionaire Life Strategy. And in this podcast, we're interviewing entrepreneurs that are following their passion. And please let me introduce my guest for today. She is Smita Das Jane. After 14 years of the, in the, work in the corporate world, in leadership roles with Fortune 500 companies, she decided to follow her passion. She launched the Empower Yourself coaching program. And as a certified personal empowerment life coach and executive coach, she already had close to 150 coaching hours in the first year. Not only that, but she also pursued her passion as a writer. And in that same year, she already had a fiction bestseller on her name. And how do you know she's following her passion? Because every day she gets up with a smile on her face. Please welcome Smita Das Jane. Hi, Smita. Welcome. Hi, Erwin. Thank you so much for having me here on your podcast. Yes, you're definitely welcome. More than welcome to follow because, you know, having the Empower Yourself coaching program, it's so similar to what I'm doing. So I love to have you in the show. So tell me a bit, how, what made you decide after 14 years working in the corporate world to just quit your job and follow your own passion? So actually, the story starts a little while back, uh, you know, uh, when I was in my 11th or 12th year of working. And there was a day, I mean, that time that was pre COVID, right? There was a Mm -hmm. moment of time and I was so, so busy. I didn't know when my mornings used to start. And many a times I used to fall on bed exhausted, often with the laptop on my side. Uh, My family was never sure about my availability. And somewhere, for some reason, I didn't want to work that much, but all I seemed to do was work, work and work. And I was deeper and deeper submerging into this cesspool of busyness, as I call it now. Mm -hmm. Until one fine day, uh, uh, that was a weekday, I remember it because that was the day when the annual promotion list of the company that I used to work in then, that had come out. Yeah. And that for some reason that day was even busier than normal. So I didn't had, I was in back to back client meetings. I didn't have time to check the internal mails. Uh, my phone was continuously on silence. I had put it on silence because there was some escalation going on in the project I was doing then now as a management consultant, I was heading that project. And then it was only towards the late evening when I came home and managed to spend some time with the family. Then again, the lights went off and I opened my laptop to finish some pending work that I remembered, okay, this email had come, which had the promotion list. And I opened that email and I saw my name in that list. And the feeling that I got was indifference. Mm. I mean, I had worked so hard. I was working hard. And then I realized this is what one works for, right? The rewards, the recognition. And if once the recognition comes, once the reward comes, firstly, I didn't have time to enjoy that laurel. Heck, I didn't even attend any calls and congratulatory messages that came when I saw the phone later. I mean, I didn't have time to see it from afternoon till late night. Secondly, of course, my family was asleep till then. I didn't have anyone to share this big news at that moment of time. Mm -hmm. The sad part was I didn't even want to. I mean, this big thing and you were taking it as if, you know, it's just a matter of fact. And that is when I realized this is not how life is supposed to go. Okay, I had not slogged to get the best of education in some of the most prestigious universities in my country. Mm -hmm. I had not slogged to get a great placement. And after that, I had not slogged for 11, 12 years. That was the time then. Working in a high profile role in a marquee company, only to work, eat and sleep. I mean, that is not how life was supposed to be. And that was the day, at least one positive thing that came out of this incident was I decided, okay, I will take control of my time rather than letting time control me. Nice. that was the key actually okay this i would say you know this uh, uh drive 
this intent to have control of your time because there are things i wanted to do in life right and I, unless i had time i was not being able to do those things and i didn't want to spend the next 12 years of my life as i had spent my last 12 years of working yeah, yeah. so that was the key and uh, then i started to connect with those small things okay i had stopped go, you know going out to walk because i had this notion i didn't have time so i made a pact with myself i'll at least walk for 10 minutes every day and i'll find time for it somehow and once you know once i started small that okay when you say okay that you have to walk and you have to lose wealth you have hell uh, weight you have to be fit it seems like a big goal but when you just start small okay i'll walk for 5 or 10 minutes every day it somehow seems manageable right yeah yeah and that was when i started to find time for the things i liked and uh, that was when i realized okay that when back when i was in school i used to write a lot I write mm-hmm. as in fiction those yeah. creative stories and articles and of course i wrote uh, i continued writing while i joined my corporate job the only difference is that creative stuff was replaced by reports and presentations <laughs> and thought leadership yeah, yeah, and business yeah. articles i had written a lot of them and somehow in between that i had lost touch with my creative side so i again you know while finding time to do those small things i liked or used to like once i rediscovered my i i would say i rekindled my love affair with writing mm. and that was when those started those small short stories those creative pieces which i wrote and kept to myself on circulated amongst my closest friends mm-hmm. that's it and life yeah. continued as normal for the next 2 years like i was in the as i said that was like i had completed 12 years of working when this incident happened yeah yeah and there was some improvement and then you know i worked for 2 more years what happened you know like a year after this incident pandemic struck yeah and yeah. for most like for most people it was a period of introspection for me okay uh i had spent a lot of time even before the pandemic since i was you know finding time for the small things these questions had started to occur in my mind what was i doing what am i doing okay i am earning money okay i have a high profile role okay in the eyes of other people i was very successful but i was not feeling fulfilled mm. okay Yeah, yeah. Pursuing the small things outside my work was helping me st- sustain through the work hours. Like you know, I used to <laughs> go through the day thinking, okay, in the evening I will read or I'll go for a walk or I'll play my guitar. So okay, so evenings became the reason for me to go through the mornings and the rest of the day. Oh wow! But then yeah. anyway, I was having these questions that okay, is this how I want to spend the rest of my life? uh then the pandemic struck and the world as we know will never be the same it is still not the same as it was yeah and that is when i realized life is too too short and too uncertain to do the things you don't enjoy doing i mean it's not worth it it's not even worth the money that i was earning i mean it was okay i will admit that it was easier for me to say because i had already worked for 14 years had i been at the entry level maybe my thought process would have been different but at that stage i had the cushion of you know reaching at a certain level and having that you know amount of cushion that backup to follow my passions and i decided okay i don't want to spend my rest of the weekdays looking forward to the weekends i don't want to spend my monday waiting for a friday anymore i want every day to be like a friday yeah eat a nice. monday or a sunday and uh, one uh, what happened you know when you start thinking about certain things the universe also shows you some path okay i mean yeah. that's what happens so at the same time when i was contemplating i was actually thinking okay i quit and i'll pursue writing and i'll also pursue something else because uh, writing for me i'm a passionate writer but i knew know that if i have to do it 12 hours a day i might not enjoy it so much besides if i do it for 2 3 hours a day that yeah. much by that i knew it about myself so i and i was not a sort of person who would be engaged doing housework i mean i absolutely respect homemakers my mother was one a lot of wonderful ladies i know are one but i know myself that i would 
go mad if i were to just you know sit yeah, yeah. at home and look after that stuff yeah you need this people thing. around you yes i need people to talk to i need to engage my brain creatively and also analytically so the creative yeah. stuff was taken care of by uh, writing but i wanted something i knew that i had to find something else and that was when again uh, i said you know the universe threw certain answers one uh, i had written those small pieces some time back as i was explaining and circulated it amongst my friends one friend sent me the a short story that i had only written he sent that same to me and he's like you had written it 2 years ago when are you planning to publish it because it was so good by that time i had forgotten that i had written that story and i started reading it and when i started reading it i texted that friend in the middle of reading that story and i'm like are you sure that i have written it because i am an avid reader and while going through it i found the story so good that i couldn't believe that i would write as engaging a story and that was a fact and i am like are you playing a joke on me are you sure this is the story that i have written and sent to you he's like yeah absolutely <laughs> that is why i'm saying it's so great go ahead and publish it and i was like okay yeah this story is good like from a third party perspective as a reader i couldn't believe i mean i could see the merit in that unfortunately we are living in an era of amazon kdp and also publishing something is actually not a big deal so the same night this i remember this was sometime in february 2021 i remember you know just fiddling with amazon kdp just trying to figure out okay it was said that it is easy to publish via kdp just trying to figure out how it works and the next thing i know the same night the book is up by the next morning i am an author i mean <laughs> that is how it started as an experiment so i realized yeah. okay i have the talent there is a medium for me to display that talent yeah, yeah. there is no barrier mm -hmm. and one can go ahead and do it so the same day the book got published i type type my resignation letter and sent it to my boss oh wow that, okay this is what i enjoy it was not that that was the first story i'm not saying it was a best seller or something but the feedback was amazing and i enjoyed doing it and i just told my boss that uh, i want to enjoy the rest of my life and this is what i am doing i have figured out one of the things i want to do i'll figure out the other things nice and then i sent my notice and i spent the two months of notice period after that to figure out you know my game plan up until then i had nothing but i knew that unless i took that step i will not be able to have anything i will continue in the same world which i was not enjoying yeah so because i took that step it made me think i utilized that period to think i asked my closest friends about my strengths and when they said and i realized that one of the great thing uh, one of the good things about me throughout my career had been my managerial capabilities i was considered to be a good leader mm -hmm. and i enjoyed interacting with people i enjoyed people i enjoyed you know uh, challenging people to exceed their best yeah. and achieve a certain outcome and that is when i realized that you know taking that to the next level why limit myself within a certain circle in the organization i work in why not take it that to the next level where i use this strength of mine to empower people to take control of their life for me nice. empowerment is something that symbolizes taking control you know taking control beat of your time beat of your life beat of your health so that is what uh, you know so that is how the thought of empower yourself uh, came to my mind and then i decided okay i'm going to be a coach and that's where yeah. that journey started i enrolled in multiple certifications both in writing and coaching so there was a period sometime last year when i was having like six courses in a day going from one class to another yeah. but yeah i enjoyed it and uh, yeah so and the thing that i did i realized that all the learning that i was doing it is best i put it into practice right away so i didn't enjoy uh, sorry i didn't wait for my certification to finish to launch my business the day i enrolled for the certification was the day i announced to the world world is in my whatsapp status changed my linkedin status changed that i was a coach and i reached out to people i knew that okay this is what i am offering and if you since i am just starting if you'd like to try it for free 
because I wanted practice. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. after a period, if you liked it, you can take a paid coaching for me. But the first month is free, so four sessions was the as offering. Yeah. And so, from May twenty twenty one. I was learning how to be a coach, and I was also coaching clients. The great thing was the first three pro bono clients I took all opted for the paid coaching nice. after that pro bono period ended, and that's how my passion turned into a profession. As I nice. keep on saying, yeah. so that must have been satisfying that your first three pro bono clients became paid clients. So that means you're doing something great, right? Yes, I mean I was not expecting that to be honest. But then uh, <laughs> I was into coaching. I mean I was into coaching certification long enough to know that we tend to underestimate ourselves. Yeah. So the results uh, showed something else, and that was like very. And it's not that I asked. I didn't even have to ask two of them if you would like to take up this. They said that we didn't don't want it to stop because we are going somewhere, and we like to continue. So nice. what is your price? So my first clients actually asked me, "What is your price?" And by that time, I mean I hadn't even I didn't even had a package ready when the client asked me this question. So I had to create yeah. something on the spot. But yeah, that was how it started. Nice, nice. I remember when I started seven years ago that um, my trainer also said, you know, if uh, I, I was following a hypnotherapy training like I shared with you, and um, he said, if you're serious about this, you need to make the hours, you know, because you only learn it by applying it, right? Mm. And I also said, you know, um, I started in March my training. In August, I would get my certification. So I said all my sessions I'm giving till August are free of charge because it's part of my training. But the moment I get certified, I, I find that I can ask money for it, right? Mm. And... I put in a little ad on, on Facebook in a, in a close group in my neighborhood saying that I was doing this, you know, and I needed uh, volunteers to help me make the hours. And within two days, I had like 34 volunteers. So it's amazing, you know, and mm. the moment you see the results with your client is motivating to keep on going and to know that you're on the right path. Yes. Absolutely. It was yeah. the same with me. I mean, that was the, it was great that within the first month of starting my coaching business, I had this validation from my clients that they wanted to go for paid coaching. And that was even before I had finished my certification. I got nice. my certification in November last year, but before that I have had, I, I had, I already had paid clients before that. Yeah, so it nice. was never a worry for me at how to start my business, how to get paid clients and all. It just happened so organically. Yeah. And how, how does it feel to be an entrepreneur and be your own boss to be in control? Oh, it feels absolutely great. Uh, the good part is uh, I mean, nothing beats being in control of your time. Okay. Nothing beats being able to set your day. Uh I have the choice of working with the people I'm working with. I mean, as an employee, you, even if you're in a senior position, you don't always have that choice. You might have it as you go higher, but you won't mm -hmm. have it 100% of the time. Something yeah. that you do when you are an entrepreneur. And uh, best part is, uh, you know, uh, this is a business. This is work. I don't even feel that it's work. Okay. When I work with clients and then I, uh, you know, when those aha moments come, when clients achieve an outcome, the satisfaction that comes in their faces, I mean, nothing can beat it. So, yeah. and I can't believe that I'm getting paid for something that I enjoy doing. So nothing yeah. beats that feeling actually. Yeah. And if, if someone would ask you, how many hours a week do you work? Do you have an answer to that? Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, eight hours a day, five days a week. So 40 hours a week. It is, uh, it's a nine to five. The only thing, the regular nine to five, which I was supposed to work in the corporate world. The difference was it was never a nine to five there. It always used to exceed. Now it is nine to, it is pretty much eight hours a day. No more than that. But purposely, I make it a point it's not less than that because I'm a very 
some would call me an organized and systemic person i would take it in a positive way a systematic person i am like that uh i feel i uh, i am much more creative if i follow a certain routine and i think you know getting up early in the morning uh, my ac hours actually start i said 9 to 5 in the sense it's an 8 hour thing but my hour actually starts at 5 in the morning that is oh, the wow. time i get up and write that is my writing the fiction writing period not yeah. the non fic so the 5 is when i get up till 7 in my place everybody is asleep so 5 to 7 is when i you know write my fiction because mm -hmm. nobody disturbs me at that time Yeah. and then i get up and water my plants get up from my desk wake up my daughter to get her ready for school and i drop her to school i spend time reading newspapers then again at 10 am i am back here and the rest of the 6 hours during the day i either coach or when it's not that the entire 6 hours i am like coaching 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 but yeah 2 hours out of those 6 hours would be like coaching per day the rest of the time i spend either by on my blogs or spend time on marketing activities and i'm also a speaker related to my coaching only so you know either i'm speaking or i'm writing a speech so it goes on that kind of enabling activities that support your core offering which is yeah. coaching but i make it a point to keep that routine yeah Nice. Yeah. So long yeah. answer to your short question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but but it's it's great that you, that you manage your your time very efficiently, right? You have you have structured your time, uh, which means that you also have available time for your friends, for your daughter, for your family, and uh, that's very important. Uh, what I also hear you say is that uh, you're not only working in your business, but you're also working on your business. And a lot of entrepreneurs forget how important that is, right? Uh, yeah, and especially when you're starting out, like I'm starting out, I've not even completed one year of coaching. If I have to look at it, I started last May. Uh, especially at the time of starting out, it's very important you have to work on your business. Until yeah. and unless you work on your business, you will not. There will come a time you will not be in business. so it's yeah. very very important and uh, yeah the more you work now the less you will have to work on it later i don't think there will be a stage when you ever stop working on your business but yeah the proportion will come down as your roster keeps on getting filled up and you build your brand yeah. but i feel that as a coach i uh, have so much to serve the world right but it's not that okay people will come to me on their own people need to know that okay there is a smita das jain who helps us who empowers people to transform their passion into a profession they need to know that and yeah. unless i spend time in making people aware of this you know strength of mine then i will not be able to serve them okay. and that is what keeps me motivated to work on my business because i want to be in this business and yeah. i know it is important for me to work on so that yeah. it can be here for yeah. the long term so could you share some some examples of results you've booked with your clients is is there yeah. one particular story that stands out for you that 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 gives you this this feeling of this is the reason why i do what i'm doing right now uh Is this question about a particular coaching story that happened uh, during? Yeah, if 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 you had a client, you don't need to 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 name the person, of course, you know, mm -hmm. but just an experience you had that I would say validated that you're on the right path, that this is what mm -hmm. you're supposed to do. Yeah, so that was actually my very first client I worked with. Okay, so when she came to me, we came from similar backgrounds, like she was also in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. and juggling with the same problems that i was at a point of time she came to me that you know i am at a senior role but my day goes in tactical matters i don't have time to think and as a result you know i'm drowning in those operational work when i want to spend more time towards strategic work and that is the reason she was not enjoying her job to the extent that she was like okay i want to quit but i don't mm -hmm. know what i would like to do yeah yeah so 
through my coaching sessions essentially turned out it was not the actual job or the environment or even the role that was an issue the issue was this that she is spending time on those operational matters which anyway she had been doing when she started right and now she was at a senior position but still if 80 to 90% of your time goes towards that you won't have much energy for those strategic inputs and through our empower yourself coaching interventions finally she was able to structure her time in such a way that this you know 80 20 became a 60 40 the other way that 60% of her time was going on strategic on those thinking matters on taking decisions yeah. and the rest of it in operational matters and at the end of it you know she decided okay this is what i actually love so i don't want to quit my job after all i don't even want to change my company but this oh, is nice. what i want my day to be like nice and uh, till date uh, i mean of course now we i'm not coaching her for that particular goal the goal has changed but in this aspect uh she is like you know she's still enjoying her role and she's pretty much in control of her work time so Perfect. that is what gave me the satisfaction like yeah. somebody came to you saying that i want to quit and at the end of it no i'm happy doing what i'm doing because i changed my day like this so. nice and that that shows that that uh, and i recognize it myself as well if people come to you they think they have a problem and they already think they have the solution you know in this mm-hmm. case she had the idea that she had to quit her job because she wasn't like uh, she didn't like what she was doing and but actually by by finding the problem behind the problem you know and really pinpointing it and finding the root cause what what made her feel miserable at her work um comes up with a solution she didn't even expect at the beginning because mm. she already had a mindset that she had to quit her job because she had yes. to find something else uh, you turn it around in showing her what she actually should do and what she should delegate to to her employees and and other people yes and that's 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 one and that's that's the reason why it's good to 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 have a coach to 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 mirror your your issues and your challenges because yeah. you you get so caught up in your own um id that you're missing out the easy solutions and this was actually an easy solution by reorganizing her uh, activities she got the job she loved and and she was supposed to do at that moment yeah i mean a coach helps put things in the right perspective you see things from a particular lens a coach through you know sees that same thing from a different more objective lens and she or he will apply more structured tools and techniques to help you arrive at a solution ultimately you know you are coming to a coach for a solution the solution is within you but with the help of a coach you will be able to arrive at a more appropriate solution in a quicker way than if you were to yeah. you know work on it on your own so, yeah nice yeah. nice great story great examples meeta and that's that's the reason why people like us uh, need to be here right Yes. <laughs> we have a purpose in the world. Exactly. And we are making the world a better place. So. Yeah. So, um about your writing, how is how is that going? How is it working for you? Oh, uh I mean nothing gives me more joy than you know putting uh, pen to paper or should I say keyboard to MS Word whatever <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh yeah, I am st- it's I think uh, it's like uh 400 days straight that i have been getting up 5 in the morning and writing something i mean at my worst days i write at least 500 words a day oh wow on my better days it goes obviously because you will not be in the same flow every day of course but the good thing is that you know if you have it as a routine see earlier i had to force myself i used to get up at 6 so it was not that i used to rise late but still changing that 6 to 5 was a mind shift change Yeah, so yeah, earlier yeah. i had to like push myself out of bed and even switching on the computer at my work desk was an effort and all uh, but i realized that for after 10 days straight once i got into the habit of switching on my laptop and opening a blank document i realized okay i will not keep on staring at that blank document if nothing else i'll describe how the dark world looks like how the table looks like what do you feel 
yeah. so there are some days you know when i don't feel like writing but i force myself to write because it's a goal that you know i have to write 500 words and yeah. those days i just describe what i am feeling that i don't want to write i describe what i am yeah, feeling yeah. Uh, yeah but that's... yeah yeah so that way i mean i know my writing journey has also started but uh, writer's block is a real challenge so touch wood i know that because of this habit at least even in the days that i don't feel like writing i won't struggle with writer's block there is a phase last month itself that uh, i didn't feel like writing much but just because of this habit i was putting some words on to paper and all and even not even after not feeling like writing i could finish three stories in that month which was like my least productive month yeah nice uh, but uh, yeah so by uh, i released my first book last year that was a best seller that was a short story collection now my second book is ready it's a novel so that's taking uh, one level up and the book is ready uh, in fact i have completed fourth round of edits and uh, uh some publishers are evaluating it so i'm nice. waiting for their response which should come within the next couple of months if they pick it up great if not i have anyway self published i know the tricks and tips so i'll do it yeah. i mean had i gone the self publishing route by now the, even the second book would have been out nice but i'm waiting it out to see yeah. if additional publishing is also my cup of tea Yeah. If it happens, it. If it not does not happen, I'm enjoying writing, so that's also fine. I will yeah. anyway have a book. And, and it's 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 nice that you just shared that that what the power of habit can do for you, right? I I remember that I once set a target for myself of putting uh, little posts on LinkedIn, hmm. uh, twice a week or three times a week, and at a certain moment I also had some sort of writer's block, and I just wrote that down. You know, no. I started something. Uh, you know, you have those days that you don't know what to write, and and when you force yourself, uh, you put something on paper. You know, but it's it's the habit and blah blah blah. So, and there it was. There I had my post for LinkedIn. <laughs> yes. And I just ended up with the questions. Uh, do you recognize this? You know, and it was very engaging because people recognize it. You know. Yeah. And it's just what you said. The if you don't feel like writing on a story or a novel or whatever. Just write down uh, what you're feeling or exactly. what what you're missing or whatever you know, and uh, even that will will start this creative process in your mind, and yes. maybe after half an hour there will be something that you can use for a story or novel or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, you would have got something out of your system. Like you know, right? Describing your feeling is the best way to get the negative feelings out because oh, you yeah, have definitely. it out somewhere. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, so far so good. I mean, that is one thing. Writing, Irwin, I can tell you, I can. If you ask me, twenty years down the line, uh, line, what is the one thing you would be doing? I think I would. My answer would still be the same. That I am sure I'd be getting up at five in the morning every day and putting on those two three hours of writing. That is for sure. Nice, nice. Um, so you just said what your you you finished your second uh second book, which is a novel. Um, yes. Already planned for a third one. Oh yes, uh, <laughs> the, the plot is in mind. Yeah, See, stupid is, question, uh, of course. <laughs> no, the thing is, okay, I don't only write one thing at a time. So a novel is one story, but uh, I keep on writing those short stories. So I said last month was my least productive one because I wrote three short stories a month. Usually, my run rate is that I write two short stories a week. Oh wow. So yeah, so every week, I mean, in a month that way, six to eight short stories do come out, and it's we live in a digital world, okay? A yeah, novel yeah. is an investment in time, so people have to invest a lot of time from start to finish to read that five hundred page book. Yeah, a short story can be anything from if it's a flash fiction, a thousand words. If it's a longer short story, it will be five to six thousand words, but it does not take that much investment. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. the point of view of a reader. So in this uh, digital world, where you know occupying a mind space of a reader or a viewer is a challenge, a short story is a great way to you know basically establish yourself as a writer in the minds of a reader. 
so i yeah. keep on writing stories uh, i mean as i say i get up in the morning it's basically the short stories i write when i feel like writing which is most of the time when i don't i write something or the other but yeah i mostly write short stories yeah. in fiction yeah nice nice and with regards to your coaching business do you have a certain niche that you serve yes so i work with uh, mid career corporate professionals Okay, uh, between 25 to 45 years of age, uh, who uh, who earn well, but who don't have time to do all that they would like to do, and they don't find a sense of fulfillment in their jobs. So I first help them to find time to uh, do all that they like, and then. assist them in transforming their passion either into a pursuit or a profession see everybody wants to need uh, needs to have a passion in life yeah. it's not necessary if you were if your profession is your passion that's great but you don't necessarily need you know to have a have a passion as your profession you can carry it outside your profession yeah. and that is what i call a pursuit so depending on you know what your passion is what do you want to do sometimes you might be okay with your job like i was unhappy okay so i took that step some people yeah. might be okay they were they would not be unhappy but they would not be happy either so they would want something else so in that case okay you can tap into your passion and that something else you know becomes your pursuit and at, and in some cases like mine it can be you know that you convert your passion into a profession so that's what i help people with okay nice. passion into either a pursuit or a profession yeah did did you find it hard to become an entrepreneur or did you already had a little experience from your family or close close friends or no uh, i know uh, nobody in my family is actually an entrepreneur i come from a very middle class family my dad was in the defense forces so you know we have uh, i have seen salaried jobs throughout my life in fact uh, in india uh, it's sad to say as relative to the western world uh, girls are women are educated but in terms of labor force participation their participation is way down mm. so i am the first uh, woman in my family actually who even worked you know worked as an outside home and went oh, yeah. out to pursue a profession and when i married uh, that became a big problem <laughs> in my future home because they had never seen a woman go outside <laughs> over the world yeah. but that's a separate story so the thing is okay even with me even earlier you know it was sort of a trend setting thing of a woman going out to work yeah. and then when i gave it all up and became an entrepreneur uh, P, uh, my family members thought in a good way because they were concerned about me they thought that i'm gone crazy First, they thought I was a crazy. Well, they met me that you know I started working. Then after fourteen yeah. years, when I gave it up, they thought I was crazy to give all that money and everything. Uh, to do what? I'm like uh, writing and coaching. They're like writing. Who does? I mean, who <laughs> do you get money by writing? <laughs> I mean, you could you were doing writing even in your job. I mean, obviously presentations and reports were also yeah. writing, right? Yeah. And then. coaching i had to explain to them what coaching is they were like for them coaching was like you know those tuition classes in education <laughs> so i had to explain them so yeah no uh, role model as such yeah. but i would say i mean what helped me because uh, see i knew i had to do coaching i wanted to serve people and that is why when i enrolled into a coaching certification my thought was to get better at the art of coaching right because i wanted to help people the best possible way you know that coaching is not regulated so certification is not really a compulsion but i yeah. thought it is only fair that you know in order to give your best to people you should invest in yourself and come to a certain level it was only when i entered into it did i realize that okay coaching is not a practice but a business and you have to work on your business because clients yeah. just because you change your linkedin profile and say that you are a coach that does not mean the people will come to you hey smita is there oh, no, no, no. so it does not happen like that so i would say you know uh, it is only 3 4 months down the line that i started coaching that it came to struck me that hey i am an entrepreneur <laughs> 
otherwise what i was doing i was coaching i was reaching out to people say okay give me a i mean i'm practicing give me some practice hours and then it turned into something else and then i realized okay there is a limited circle i have i have to propound myself outside that circle and get clients so to that i have to be in social media i mean i only was on linkedin uh, till may last year because i mean i was in the corporate world right linkedin was the only social media account that yeah, is important yeah, yeah, yeah. it is only after that that i opened a facebook account and twitter and instagram because i thought it was important to be in the four key social media and all yeah. and it was while doing these marketing activities that i realized hey this is what this is a being an entrepreneur about and what i am doing is actually a business and not a practice and that is the way to go about it if you scale up okay i mean if you ask me personally purely from a financial view point okay i would be happy if i coach you know three four clients a month and because see as i said because i have worked to a certain time and the good thing i mean being the person i am i had also planned my finances in a certain way so it's i'm not here so there is no pressure of earning money as such and uh, i know that i'm fortunate not many people might be in that position but fortunately i am in that position so there's no pressure that okay i have to earn that much to sustain myself so i would be happy from that perspective okay purely if i look at it that okay i'm engaging myself and i'm happy but i also want to serve people okay i know that i have so much to offer to this world and i am like if i limit myself to this small setup you know of coaching these three four people a month one on one and uh, yeah i mean there are so many people in the world who could do with the services that i am offering so yeah. i am actually doing a disservice if i don't market myself and let them know at least that they have the option and let them try that option and unless i do that i will not be i want to you know i mean i want to come into contact with as many people as possible and make sure that they get up every morning with a smile on their faces nice and for that i need to spend time uh, working on my business and yeah that's why i am doing it it is for you know this i have this dream in mind that one day you know i'll be speaking on a st- i mean i have spoken on a stage but i will be speaking on this big stage with the hall full and full of 10000s of people and i'll be telling them you know you can all get up in the way from the from your beds with a smile on your faces and look forward to your day and there will be so much positive energy around in the room yeah and you know and when these people go out they will carry that positive energy out into the world and the world will become a better place see you can't give love to people until you love yourself you can't be positive to others until you are positive within and that yeah. is my dream i want to help more and more people to be in charge and in control of their lives and be positive so nice. that is why i'm doing what nice. i'm doing. i i can even feel the passion in your voice and it's it's beautiful to see so i think we could talk for hours if you wanted to <laughs> um, you bet yeah um do you have a little tip or a little piece of wisdom that you would like to share the audience yeah okay so you know uh, sometimes you are too busy in the hustle bustle of life to lose in touch with the things that you like okay so a simple question like what's your passion you might find it difficult to answer okay so in that case if you know you don't know what your passion is and you are going through your life in an autopilot move there are three simple questions to ask yourself and f- take that first step to discover or rediscover your passions okay first question what was the last activity that you did when you lost all track of time just remember that it might be far back in the childhood it might be as recent as last week but just ask yourself that question and took take note of what activity it is the second question if you were to be locked up in a bookstore overnight which are the corners you will find yourself in or you will go to okay mm-hmm. so that will give you the second hint okay do you go to spirituality do you go to religion do you go to management which are those corners the third question 
given free time with your laptop or the internet connection whatever which are the websites you will find yourself going to okay so these are the three questions answer those and note down the bullet points and you will get the hint okay what are the activities i like what are the areas i am in, interested in could one of these be my passions so these are just some quick questions to get you to start thinking nice. and find the answer within yourself nice and they're actually very uh, valid questions as well you know the the there I wouldn't say easy to answer, but it gets your mind thinking, you know, what would I like? What would I do? You put yourself in that position and that will indeed give you already some certain uh, direction. Yeah, great. Yes. Great, great, great question, Sir Smita. So if people want to know more about you or get in touch with you, how can they do that? Where do they need to go? Yeah, so they can uh, log on to my website www.lifecoachsmitadgen.com and uh, right on the site essentially on every page of that site there is a booking app so it's simple so they can actually book a complimentary strategy session with me so they can click on that book uh, book a complimentary session link it's right there on the uh, you know on the first thing they will see when they log into the site and looking at the dates on my calendar they can book a session with me at a suitable time and then we nice. can see. nice and how how will they find you on social media you said you are on linkedin facebook yeah. uh, instagram yes so i am on linkedin smita das jen that is my handle on mm -hmm. instagram my handle is smita d jen and uh, facebook uh, the handle is smita das jen I'm also on Twitter, same Smita Das Jen one. That's so, easy to remember. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Smita, for sharing your uh, your passion. Uh, lovely to hear it, and I can I can feel the energy. You know, it's all it's coming into my room. So I hope the <laughs> audience will find the same. Um, find out more about Smita on her website. Uh, connect with her, follow her, do everything, but most of all follow your own passion this was follow your passion podcast with my guest smita dust jane and looking forward to see you next time thank you for all and have a great day